The Central Asian Revolt of 1916, also known as the Semirechai Revolt and as Urkan Kyrgyz, Arkashian Exodus, IPA, Yerkin in Kyrgyzstan, was an anti-Russian uprising by the Muslim inhabitants of Russian Turkestan. Its direct cause was the conscription of Muslims who were formally exempted into a military service on the Eastern Front of World War I. Underlying issues also included tensions between different ethnic groups under Russian rule. The revolt led to the exodus of thousands of Kyrgyz and Kazakhs into China, while the suppression of the revolt by the Imperial Russian Army led to thousands of deaths. However, the Russian state was not able to restore complete order until the outbreak of the October Revolution. Russian liberals like Alexander Kerensky and some Russian historians were the first to bring international attention to these events. Topic. Background By 1916, Turkestan and the Governor Generalship of the Steppes had accumulated many social, land, and inter ethnic contradictions caused by the resettlement of Russian and Ukrainian settlers, which began in the second half of the 19th century, after the Emancipation Reform of 1861, which abolished serfdom. A wave of resettlement was introduced by a number of lands and legislative reforms. On June 2, 1886, and March 25, 1891, several acts were adopted which were "...regulations on the management of the Turkestan Krai", and "...regulations on the management of Akmola, Semipalatinsk, Semirechai, Ural and Turgai regions", that allowed most of the lands of these regions to be transferred to the ownership of the Russian Empire. Each family from the local population were allowed to own a plot of land of 15 acres for a perpetual use. From 1906 to 1912, as a result of Stolopan reforms in Kazakhstan and the rest of Central Asia, up to 500,000 peasant households were transported from central regions of Russia, which divided about 17 tithes of developed lands. Topic: The Revolt. Topic. Institution of conscription After Emperor Nicholas II adopted on the requisition of foreigners at the age of 19 to 43 years inclusive, for rear work in the frontline areas of the First World War. The discontent of people fueled the unfair distribution of land, as well as the calls of Muslim leaders for a holy war against the infidel Russian rule. On the 25th of June 1916, the 8th of July 1916, NS, shortly before the start of the rebellion, Tsar Nicholas II adopted a draft of conscripting Central Asian men from the age of 19 to 43 into labor battalions for the service in the ongoing in support of the ongoing Brusilov offensive. Some regional Russian officers were bribed to exempt certain people from conscription. The cause of the uprising was also due to the transfer of lands by the Tsarist government to Russian settlers, Cossacks, and poor settlers. Political and religious extremism played a role too, as well as the fear of being used as human shields during the Russo-German trench warfare. Beginning of the uprising The first casualties of the revolt were in July 3–4, 1916 16 to 17 July 1916, NS in Kajand, present-day Tajikistan, when an outraged mob assaulted Russian officials. However, not all 10 million people living in Turkestan were willing to participate such as the Tekians living in the Transcaspian region, who were willing themselves to be conscripted. On July 7, July 20, NS, the civil unrest spread to Tashkent. In modern day Uzbekistan, the rebels had several demands, including transparency in how the lists of citizens due for conscription were compiled, to delay the draft until the end of the harvest, and for one man of each family to stay at home. 83 Russian settlers died and 70 were captured following riots in Jizak. Subsequently, Russian troops entered the city and captured it, causing many civilian casualties. On July 17, 1916, July 30, NS, a martial law was declared over Turkestan military district. 
The insurrection began spontaneously, but it was unorganized without a single leadership. Nevertheless, the rebellion took a long time to suppress. On the 31st of July, the 13th of August, NS Alexei Kropatkin, the Governor General of Russian Turkestan, conducted a purge of the local hierarchy and convinced Nicholas II of Russia to postpone the conscription until mid-September. However, this effort proved too late to reverse the uprising. On August 10, the 23rd of August, NS rebels numbering in the thousands attacked the city of Prebochakenska while wielding white banners. It was only defended by a local garrison of Russian soldiers who were on leave from the front, who swiftly constructed two wooden cannons to try and beat back the attack. The first blew up, while the second was lost in a Kirga attack. Undeterred, the defenders created four new cannons, which still work today. By August 11, the 24th of August, NS, a cavalry force of the Kirga rebels, disrupted a telegraph line between Verny, Bishkek, Tashkent, and European Russia. A wave of inter-ethnic violence also swept through Semirechai. Dungan detachments destroyed several Russian settlements of Ivanitsko and Koltsovka in the region of Shivalske. A Kyrgyz attack on the Russian settlers in Sazanovka, near Lake Isik Kul was repelled after local women shot on the Khan leading the attack, causing the offensive to disintegrate. <inaudible> <inaudible> Rebel weaponry The rebels, including those under the control of Ibrahim Tuliyev, suffered weapon shortages throughout the course of the rebellion. Weapons used by the rebels included iron tipped spears and horse whips. At one point in the rebellion, Ibrahim had discovered that several cart munitions would soon pass through the mountain road that followed the Chu River. Subsequently, he organized an ambush in Bomgorch. After a brief cavalry skirmish and exchange of fire, the rebels managed to capture seven carts, with nine crates of guns and twelve ammunition boxes. The rebel troops were delighted to be able to fight the Russian army with their own tools. A rebel leader was quoted as saying, God has given us guns that Nicholas meant to use against the Kyrgyz, his cruelty will befall his own head. Topic. Massacres by the rebels Other villages full of Russian immigrants, Cossacks, and workers were burnt down by the insurgents. Because the majority of men got drafted and were at the home front, the settlers could not organize a resistance. Some settlers fled, some fought, while others were helped by friendly Kyrgyz neighbors. At the beginning of the uprising, the majority of the relocated population who were mostly women, old people, and children died. Responses in a telegram to the Minister of War August 16, the 29th of August, NS, Turkestan Governor General and Commander of the Turkestan Military District Alexei Kropatkin reported, in one Shevalsky UYEZD 6,024 families of Russian settlers suffered from property damage, of which the majority lost all movable property. 3,478 people lost and died. In some places, especially in the Fergana Valley, the uprising was led by dervish preachers who were calling for a jihad. One of the first people who announced the beginning of a holy war against the infidels was Qasim Koja, an imam in the main mosque of Zaman village. He proclaimed Zarminsky Beck and organized the murder of a local police officer Sobolev, in which after that he then appointed his own ministers and announced a military campaign to capture the railway stations of Obrushevo and Ursashevskaya. Along the way, his force killed any Russian person that was encountered. The Governor-General of the Steppe Region Nikolai Sukhomlanov postponed the draft service until September 15, 1916 the 28th of September, NS, however, it had no effect on to stopping the uprising in the province. Even the requests by Alakan Bakikhanov and Akhmet Batursanov who were the leaders of a Kazakh nationalist movement which later became known as the Alash Party did not calm the population in an attempt to prevent brutal repressions towards unarmed civilians. The leaders repeatedly tried to convince the administration not to hurry with mobilization, conduct preparatory measures, and they also as well demanded a freedom of conscience, improving the environment of academic work, organizing the training of Kyrgyz and Kazakh children in their native language by establishing boarding schools for them and allowing local press. Topic. 
Topic: <laughs> Suppression of the revolt. As a response, around 30,000 soldiers, including Cossacks, armed with machine guns and artillery were diverted from the Eastern Front of World War I and sent in to crush the rebels, and arrived two weeks later via trains. The town of Noversiskia, which had resisted the rebels for 12 days, was finally relieved thanks to the reinforcements, local Cossacks and settler militias played an additional role too. By the end of the summer, the insurrection was put down in the Samarkand, Sadaria, Fergana and in the other number of regions as well, forcing the rebels into the mountains. In the mountains, the rebels suffered from the cold. In September and early October, the revolt was suppressed in Semirechai and the last remnants of resistance were crushed in late January 1917 at the Transcaspian region. By the end of summer 1916, the rebellion had started to wane. Alexei Kropatkin issued an order, explaining who was exempt from the draft, what kind of service the Kyrgyz would serve, and that conscripts would receive one ruble per day and free food and lodging. However, with no reliable lines of communication this message took over a month to reach the rebels, as the uprising was being put down, there were often instances of executions including the ones committed by the settlers, which suffered brutally from the insurgents. For the murder of their parents, wives, and children, militiamen sometimes took revenge on innocent civilians or imprisoned people in those atrocities. By order of the Turkestan Governor-General, military courts were established in district cities and imposed death sentences towards all the rebels who took part in the uprising. In the eastern part of Russian Turkestan, tens of thousands of surviving Kyrgyz and Kazakhs fled toward China. In the Tian Shan Mountains they died by the thousands in mountain passes over 3,000 meters high. On December 13, 1916, December 26, 1916 NS, Alexander Kerensky convened in the Russian parliament to propose the segregation of the Russian settlers and the local settlers. He was quoted as saying, How can we possibly blame a backward, uneducated and suppressed Aboriginal people so dissimilar to us, for having lost patience and committing acts of revolt for which they immediately felt remorse and regret? <laughs> <laughs> Deaths 3,000 Slavic settlers were killed during the first phase of the revolt. Arnold Toynbee alleges 500,000 Central Asian Turks perished under the Russian Empire though he admits this is speculative. Rudolf Rummel citing Toynbee states 500,000 perished within the revolt. Kyrgyz sources put the death toll between 100,000 and 270,000. Russian sources put the figure at 3,000. Kyrgyz historian Sheikhul Batirbeva puts the death toll at 40,000, based on population tallies. Topic. Legacy During the Soviet Union, leaders of the rebellion such as Amangeldi Imanov and Alibi Jangildan were seen as revolutionary heroes against the Tsarist regime. By having many streets and settlements in Kazakhstan named after them, Erkan was not covered by Soviet textbooks, and monographs on the subject were removed from Soviet printing houses. As the Soviet Union was disintegrating in 1991, interest in Erkin grew. Some survivors have begun to label the events a massacre or genocide. In August 2016, a public commission in Kyrgyzstan concluded that the 1916 mass crackdown was labeled as genocide. See also Basmachi movement Western imperialism in Asia Topic External links Photo gallery of human and animal remains from Erkan incident at Badel Pass from RFE RL Semirechai on fire A story of rebellion documentary on the 1916 rebellion Topic. Literature Noak, Christian, Muslimische Nationalismus im Russischen Reich
Nations Building on National Bewegging BEI Tatarin und Bashkaran 1861-1917, Stuttgart 2000. Pierce, Richard A., Russian Central Asia 1867-1917. A Study in Colonial Rule, Berkeley 1960. Zercher, Eric J., Arming the State. Military Conscription in the Middle East and Central Asia, 1775-1925, London 1999.